So I uh, promised I would do an update uh, of my plants in the garden closer to springtime. So we had a, uh, a pretty bad freeze here in Vancouver, Canada uh, during December and, and into January. We saw lows uh, of minus 15 in Vancouver. Here where we are located on Bowen Island, it got down to minus 10 where I am in our location. But it was almost two weeks of below freezing temperatures, which is really unusual for our area. Um, we usually stay above freezing and if it does drop below zero, it's, it's like minus five at the most. So it's a pretty brutal winter. So I want to show you, uh, it's been now, well, what is it? It's uh, mid-March. So uh, it's about a month and a half since I did the last video, which is um, in the video list under uh, After the Freeze My Garden. So I uh, have a look at that. So this is about a month and a half after I shot that video. And already at that time, I could tell there was some da damage to the plants and which ones will make and which ones will not. But now a month and a half after, it's quite evident uh, which ones suffered. And there are some surprising uh, results and then some uh, plants that actually did quite well. Anyways, uh, let's start with this. Camrops Cumulus Varsorifera. So it's still looking pretty good, and these are more hardy than the regular Cumulus, but I do see a little bit of freeze damage to some of the fronds. So these are the ones that got exposed the most, you can see down here. Um, the center fronds look pretty good still, and the center spear looks good. So this is likely gonna be a survivor and be fine. Uh, again, I wasn't here uh, during the freeze, so I did absolutely no protection other than my standard putting some leaves around the uh, base of the palms. I do that to almost all my palms just to protect the roots and the uh, crown from uh, direct freeze damage. And it seems to have helped, in my opinion. Um, this is a bit of a surprise to me. This is a um, young yucca rostrata. As you can see, uh, a month and a half ago, it looked pretty good. But now there's quite a bit of yellowing to it. And um, crown still looks okay. So this one might suffer uh, a little bit this uh, year as it hopefully recovers. But again, because it's fairly young and I planted it here a little over a year ago, it probably doesn't have a very established root system. So that would explain why I, why I got damaged. So these, this, this is another surprise here. These are Yucca Gloriosa variegata. Uh, this is not freeze damage, but this is uh, fungus. So because we had so much cool, wet weather, um, these are all little spots from fungus that uh, has attacked the leaves. The center spears look good. So what I'll likely do is I'll cut these things back till it's just uh, the new growth in the middle and then it will quickly grow and branch out and it should be fine. Up here is a regular Camrops humulus and as you can see it is looking like crap and will likely completely defoliate and possibly die. So I even haven't even bothered tugging at the center spears but if I do, I'll bet you they'll pull out just like that. So I haven't bothered even with peroxide on this thing just because I think it's it's a goner. It just looks so bad. Uh, it's also in a spot that was very exposed. And, and again, I transplanted it here last year, so didn't have a great established root system. So I got too many of these things anyways in the yard, and it's now shown to me that they're only about as hardy as minus 10 and then they're they're toast after that in our cool wet winters that we get occasionally well the cold part occasionally uh, but hey right next to it trachycarpus fortunae absolutely no problems a bit rough uh roughed up from the wind and the snow load but uh from looking at most trachycarpus all over town i'd say 90 percent of them made it the young ones um, or the very exposed ones or the newly transplanted ones uh, were damaged or, or killed. But uh, this is a fantastic choice of a palm for our area or for cooler climates down to minus 15, no problems. 
Rostrata that I moved here. I actually bought this cheap $40 at the uh, nursery. They, it was so damaged at the nursery, as you can see, it had some uh, rotting issues. So I cut all this back uh, just to try and save it. And then I actually put a, a roof over this, uh, just a roof to keep the rain off of it for this winter. And as you can see, it's beautiful. It's coming out with nice new growth. So um, there is something to be said for more mature plants doing better. And this is an example of a mature, more mature rostrata, no problems. Uh, yucca gloriosa, just a regular form, no problems there. And as you can see, no fungus problems either. So I would say this one is more hardy to cool wet weather than the variegated type. This is a yucca rigida blue centra, uh, sorry, blue century. Uh, fantastic choice of a yucca for our area. Also, no damage to that one. Okay, so moving along here, there's another rostrata here. This is actually a clump of three rostratas. And there's a little bit of damage to one of them here, but the other two look good. This is a needle palm, and absolutely no damage to this, as many of you know. Needle palms are the most cold hardy palmate palm there is. So that's a good choice for our area. This is a formium or New Zealand flax looking like hell. So I'll probably have to cut it back right back down to the crown and hopefully it'll send out some new growth in the spring. Another uh, Camrops humulus that looks like crap and will probably defoliate completely. Um, as you can see, I did stuff quite a bit of leaves, so maybe some of these side shoots will, will be okay. But uh, the main growth at the top does not look good. The Rostrata here looking okay. This is a Camrop Serifera. Again, looking good. Uh, the center crown looks decent. This is a more mature Rostrata, and it's just looking absolutely beautiful. So, no obvious signs of any damage from winter, and this one was exposed, so it didn't have any hat on it to protect from rain. So, that's a good sign. So, this is a Cordyline Australis, and it I thought it might be okay and it might make it, but as you can see, there's crown collapse here. And when that happens, that means that's gonna die. So uh, there's another little offshoot down here that also has crown collapse. So unfortunately, these cordylines are not that hardy, and especially if it's a prolonged freeze. Um, if it was a little more mature, it might have been okay, but this isn't that mature. It's only a couple years old. So it'll either die back right down to the ground, or uh, it might, shoot up some offshoots here from the main trunk so we'll see what happens um eucalyptus i think it's a pocilliflora uh one of the hardiest eucalyptus you can get and it looks absolutely fine another formium that looks like it suffered quite a bit of damage so i'll have to probably cut this back and hopefully it'll shoot up some new growth Color Guard Yaccas, absolutely fine. Magnolia K. Paris, nice evergreen magnolia, absolutely no problems. So this is my Tasmanian tree fern and, and don't panic, um, it's not dead. I just cut all the fronds off of it that got freeze damage and I piled them on top of the trunk and then I put uh, a cover over that, like a tarp over that. So this is providing some insulation and some protection against uh, wind and, and cold and rain uh, with the help of the tarp, of course. So uh, pretty soon, as soon as temperatures get to about, well, stay about five degrees Celsius, so far they're dipping into the twos still. Um, I'll take all this off and then expose the trunk and it should start shooting up some new fronds, hopefully. So I'll keep you guys updated as to that. Um, here on the deck, so these guys were all outside, uh, rhodod rhododendrons and um, rosemary. The rosemary actually surprised me that it survived in this pot because all these pots froze, there's no doubt about it. Uh, another rostrata was in a pot and it looks fine. 
Um, this little trachycarpus was actually brought into my greenhouse during the cold weather, so that's why it's looking decent. Um, when I shot my original video, this Camrops humulus looked pretty decent, and I was surprised because it was in this pot during the freeze, but it was under cover of the house. So I was thinking, well, maybe the cover had some protection, but it's starting to show now freeze damage, and there was some spear pull also uh, from the center. So I have no doubt that the pot froze and it's likely gonna be a goner. The uh, has root damage and uh, yeah. Camrops uh, humulus are, are becoming uh, really not that reliable here. Um, if we go down here to my lawn, I'll show you the worst looking Wagner anise waggy palm there is. Look at that. So these are essentially Fortunais. I mean, they're, they're called waggies, but it's essentially the same palm, but stiffer fronds. And as you can see, um, definitely not as hardy as regular Fortunai, not even close. So I put this slightly hardier than a Camerops humulus, but less hardy than a Serifera, probably less hardy than a Butia as well, uh, Butia capitata. So I don't know about this one, I've been pouring hydrogen peroxide down the uh, spear spears because uh, in the trunk because I don't want to lose it but I might lose it and um, I'll just cut back all of these fronds and, and see if it shoots up any new growth it has had spear pool uh, in the past and it has recovered but this time it looks really really bad so I don't know uh, another larger trachycarpus for tunai looking perfectly fine other than the wind battered fronds uh, look at the Schlaffera Taiwaniana uh, just fine no problems whatsoever with it um, I had a small tetrapanix I planted here late in the season and it lost all the uh, fronds off of it and the top is a little mushy but down here is firm so I'm thinking I might shoot out something from the side or from the roots, I'm hoping. Um, again, if this was a more mature plant, I don't think I'd have any issues. But again, we saw one of the coldest winters in 12 years here. So um, yeah, it's pretty uncommon damage. Um, across the way here is a Jubea chilensis and it looked better a month and a half ago when I shoot the shot the first video after the freeze but now there's a little bit of freeze damage that's evident see right here and the center spears look okay now this one had some uh, old school Christmas lights around it just for some added ambient heat around the trunk but it wasn't covered or anything like that so see a little bit of damage right there so we'll see how this guy does uh, once the temperatures warm up and here we have a loquat so loquats are pretty hardy um, this one doesn't look too bad I mean it's got some fungus related issues but other than that it doesn't look too bad it's gonna shoot out some new growth soon it's the Musa Baju all the uh, stalks I left up the pseudo stems I left up are all obviously uh, gone so I do have quite a bit of leaves over the uh, roots on these so no doubt it will come back it's just probably going to come back from the ground and not from any of the pseudo stems forgot about this one this is a cordyline indivisa so a buddy of mine um, gave me uh, a few plants and I planted two of them in my garden one of them uh, along the driveway I didn't show you guys but it is toast and this one actually doesn't look horrible uh, i did have some leaves over it but other than that i didn't protect it very much so it might come back i don't know the center spear doesn't look fantastic but there's still a lot of green on it whereas the other one's completely black so we'll see if this one comes back they are not as hardy as cordialine australis so i don't expect it to come back but be a nice uh, surprise if it does. So my uh, fahoja or uh, pineapple guava is looking perfectly fine. The only damage I received was when the snow 
was sitting on it. It broke a few branches. So, um, but other than that, there's no cold damage. This uh, large VVAX bamboo also looks good. No problems there. Um, all these palms and cycads you see along here, um, I had outside for the most part. But when I went away for uh, a month to Hawaii, I did bring them into my greenhouse. So if I had left them out, I'd probably have some damage on them or I may have lost them altogether. So this is a Cyc Cycas Revoluta. This is a Chinese fan palm. This is a waggy palm, which if my other waggy dies, I might plant this one there. Um, this is actually a hybrid between a Chilensis and a Buti Ayete. It's a little yellow, uh, mostly because of nutrient deficiencies, so I'm going to have to fertilize that well in the spring. Uh, Brahia armada. And this is some filibusta and some robusta. There's three of them in there. And these guys, obviously, I had to protect because they're not as hardy as uh, the rest of these palms along here. And then the stuff in my greenhouse, obviously, is fine. The greenhouse kept at 10 Celsius entire time because I have a little heater in there uh, Arbutus marina so these aren't the native Arbutus so they're a little less hardy than the native Arbutus but aside from a few leaves that look kind of kind of gross uh, this will recover which I'm happy about because this is a very beautiful tree another um, loquat doing just fine the olives actually have zero damage on them they were in these pots outside during the freeze and there's no damage on the olives, which is great. This, on the other hand, is a eucalyptus uh, archeri, and it has obviously suffered a lot since I shot the last video. So uh, it obviously has a lot of um, cold damage. I don't know if this will recover or not. I'm not an expert on these eucalyptus, so I'm gonna give it maybe six to eight weeks during the spring, and if I don't see any new growth coming, from the tips um, I'll have to pull it out and I'll probably replace it with uh, another Pocilliflora or something that's hardier than this our cherry so this is my citrus bed and uh, again I wasn't here to protect anything otherwise I would have protected things but um, I had a thermostat here with uh, old-school Christmas lights wrapped around it just as an added measure but as you can see, uh, all these citrus look like they're very damaged to possibly dead. Um, here is actually a dwarf nectarine, which goes dormant and is perfectly fine. And there's also a nice peach tree there, which is fine. And this is all under covered uh, glass um, cover over this bed so it does protect somewhat from the rain and the snow but again the wind and the cold temperatures this thing's fully exposed to if I was here to protect it I probably would have wrapped them in some frost cloth and and uh, maybe even put uh, a covering along here and cover this entire bed because again it was like minus 10 celsius for you know several days in a row it's just crazy crazy weather um, lastly, I want to show you probably the saddest looking palm in my collection. This is a Trachycarpus manipur, and I've seen a few manipurs around the city and they're all looking like this. So these things are not as hardy as Fortunae, which is a shame because they're a beautiful palm. And as you can see, the cold damage has really developed on this one. And it transfers even into the center spear. And I do pour peroxide down here on a regular basis. I'm hoping it will maybe recover, but uh, long-term, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth growing these palms if they don't, if they're not hardy to withstand, uh, you know, temperatures minus 10, because if this thing gets big, you know, how do you protect it if the temperatures get that low? So going forward, I think I'm gonna concentrate on palms that I don't have to worry too much about uh, if we have a crazy winter like we did last year. Um, and in behind, finally, is a Schlifera delavei, and it looks okay. I mean, there's a few 
uh, leaves that look pretty crappy, but for the most part, it's just fine. Um, even the fatsia back there looks good. Spider's web fatsia looks good. So, anyways, uh, that's an update from mid March. I'll probably shoot one more update uh, maybe sometime in April and see if there's any other updates to the status of these palms. Uh, if they start shooting up new growth, I'll definitely shoot that because all these damaged bombs, because that will be uh, something good to know. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great day.